We're learning about water resource management here in the field in Abernathy, Texas. Water, it's becoming an increasingly more valuable resource all over the world. But that especially holds true here on the South Plains. Below us is the Ogallala Aquifer, and we depend on that for agriculture production, municipalities, and also for our energy production. The problem is, we're taking the water out of the Ogallala Aquifer faster than it's replenishing itself. I'm here today with Dr. Venki Udameri, who is the director of the uh, Water Resource Center here That's at Texas right. Tech University. How are you today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing fine. So tell me a little bit about the Ogallala Aquifer and how we're using it today. Yeah, the, the Ogallala Aquifer is the largest aquifer in the United States. Uh, it spans over eight different states. Uh, Texas has about 20% of the Ogallala. Okay. But we are the second largest user after Nebraska. We use about six million acre feet of water. So most of that water we use is for irrigation agriculture. Uh, some of it is used for municipal, municipal uses, uh, energy uses, livestock. We've made progress towards reducing our use of Ogallala water without really hurting the productivity of the agriculture or the economy of this region. Uh, but still, we are pulling out a lot more water than we are actually putting in, uh, which means uh, the aquifer will deplete over time. So if we're taking out faster than we're putting it in, or nature is putting it in, what do we do? Well, there are a couple of things we can do. There's really no one magic bullet to solve this problem, but um, uh, one, we need to be more efficient in the way we use water. And we also have to look at alternative sources for water. Like uh, there are aquifers below Ogallala that contain water. Really? Um, yes. And there has been a growing interest to start looking and exploring these aquifers and their potential for uh, serving as an alternative source. But cities are very much interested uh, in using these waters for as a supplemental source because if we can move some of the users off to this poor quality, deeper aquifers, uh, that means uh, we have more fresh water left for agriculture and other activities that need fresher sources of water. So that's why we're here in Abernathy, I take it. That's right, you know, so city of Abernathy, uh, along with the High Plains Water District here, set up a test well in the Dakam Aquifer. So one of the reasons, you know, one of the times we want to look at an aquifer is uh, we need to drill a well, which kind of provides us with a window to see what's happening in the aquifer. Right, What is you can't actually view it. Right, exactly. Right. Like, you know, that's a problem with groundwater because we can't see it. So how am I helping you with your research today? So what we're going to do today is walk over to the Abernathy test well. We're going to have, uh, now students of mine are looking at the quality of the water, so we'll be doing some water quality measurements, okay. seeing how that quality changes across the well. Okay. Uh, then we'll be doing a small test called a slug test to look at how does the aquifer respond, you know, how does the water levels in the aquifer respond if we increase or decrease water in that well. All right, well lead the way, let's take a look. All right, great. All right, so, so what are we doing? So we are at the Dockham Well. This is the test well uh, that was drilled uh, by the city of Abernathy and, city okay. of High, you know, and, and the High Plains Water District. Uh, so I have here one of my PhD students, Jorge Ruiz. Uh, Jorge, hey. good to meet you. I'm John. Nice uh, so Jorge has been working on looking at the salinity characterization of uh, the Dockham aquifers. It's how much salt in the water. The water exactly. And not, you know, so what happens is the older waters have been sitting there for a much longer period of time. Okay. So they've had a chance to interact much more with the salts and with the minerals that are there in the in the aquifer. So so they tend to be more saltier whereas the fresher waters tend to be up on the top. Okay. So we're trying to map, you know, where is the transition zone between fresher and the deep, you know, saltier waters. Okay. Uh, because for some applications uh, where we don't need a lot of water, we might be just able to skim off the top. So this is your window into the ground Into water. the dock and water. This is, this is what takes us back in time from now to the late Triassic age, wow. well before the dinosaurs. And we get to see what has happened to that water over that time. Okay, so tell me a little bit about this experiment, Jorge. Well, uh, as Dr. Udemir was explaining, uh, we're measuring the salinity, the salinity profile of the aquifer. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this instrument. This is a TLC meter. Okay. It's going to measure the depth uh, of, the, of the well, the aquifer, where the water is. Okay. We're also going to be measuring the temperature 
uh, of the water. Okay. And most importantly, we're gonna measure the salinity. But we don't measure the salinity directly. What we do is we measure the conductivity of the water. Okay. That's what this instrument does. And after that, we can we can do a calculation to see what the salinity is. And this is your little probe right yeah, here? Yeah, this is a probe that measures okay. this here. And, and we get the to... we get the measurements here on okay. this on this little screen here. Okay. Do you uh, want me to wind her down or? Uh, sure. Okay. If you want to. All right. The well is twelve over twelve hundred feet deep. When it beeps, do I need to stop? Yeah. Okay. It's getting heavy. Oh, there it is. Okay, pull her back up. Yeah, you do. Oops. Well, so we can get a, an exact number, you see? Okay. Right there. So, 454. 454. Minus the seven that we have here. Okay. So we have 447. 447 feet down, okay. Yeah. And that's- it And says, you have here EC. EC. Uh -huh. And that's the electric conductivity. So is that good or is that is that low conductivity? That's seven thousand. That's uh, it's high. Uh, most uh, municipal uses of water uh, have to be uh, under a thousand. Okay, so we're seven times higher than. But yeah, but the thing is, uh, we're not looking to substitute fresh water. We're just looking for another source of water that can be treated, can be mixed with fresher water. So. That's uh, so. For for those purposes, it's 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 good enough. Okay. We continued to take measurements as we went 900 feet into the well. Once we got what we needed, it was time to move on to our next task. So what we're doing here is um, we want to measure the water pressure uh, okay. or the water levels. Um, so in a well, we typically have the atmospheric pressure or the pressure of the atmosphere pushing on at the air. Right. And then the water column. So this is a pressure transducer. Okay. And what we do is it's programmed to take measurements every second. Okay. Um, so we drop it in and we rest it, you know, we don't go all the way down, but we rest it with some water column on top of it. Okay. And it measures, if there's a change in that water column, it measures, you know, what is that change? Okay. And it's measuring it every second. Okay. So, and then we also have here another logger, very similar to this, uh, which measures the barometric pressure. So we can subtract out what is the air pressure and then get what's the pressure of the water. Okay. Uh, and it's all. So all we do this is kind of drop it, uh, down hole. Okay. But that's not all we're sending down the well. This is just nothing but a, what we call a baler. Okay. Uh, so this is made out of PVC. It's about three feet long, uh, about an inch and a half uh, in diameter. Okay. Uh, so it's got an opening and when we lower it down, the water will start entering the well. And there is a ball in there. Uh, which uh, you can probably see it floating, okay. yeah. So as the water pushes it, the ball goes up, and then once it's filled with water, the ball will fall back due to gravity. Okay. And at that point, we've gotten about a liter of water. We don't want the baler going down into the well. And then <laughs> not coming back right, up. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, Dockham is not Las Vegas, you know. Whatever goes into Dockham has to come yeah. out of it. You yeah, can't yeah. stay in <laughs> How far are you going, Dan? Put this back in. Well, we have to go at least 450 yeah, we have feet to get deep it. Oh, to the get same to the water. Way. We have yeah. to get it under the water. Right, so we'll probably go about 460 feet or so. Can I do this part? Sure. All right. All right. Yeah, just, it's just nice and slow. Super light. <laughs> yeah, it's super light till it hits the water. Will I hear a splash? You will feel it, you know, you'll feel a pull on it, like, you know, because the water is coming in. Yep. Ten minutes or so, that will fill up the water and change our water level okay. and all that good stuff. We'll be right back after this. There we go, the big reveal. Get the bottom. Is 
Some dinosaur paid this out <laughs> millions of years ago. Not even a dinosaur, a prehistoric reptile. <laughs> so this is the water that we pulled out of the well. What, what are you doing with, and what is this machine? Uh, this instrument is a YSI multi-parameter uh, water quality sound. Okay. So what it does is uh, the sound has different ports where you can uh, fix multiple uh, sensors, okay. which will then measure whatever the sensors' capabilities are. So what are you what are your readings showing you right now? So right now um, it's showing me all the readings in uh, as a whole list. So if you notice. You can see the temperature of the water. Uh -huh. The water, when it was in the ground, it was about 90 degrees. But when we took it out and left it in the in the open air for some time, the temperature slowly went up. Right, right. And at the same time, if you notice, the conductivity value that we got when we inserted the uh, TLC uh -huh. was about 8,000 in the ranges of 8 and 9,000, okay. and which is what even our uh, YSI sound is. Uh, so it's matching up. It is matching up. Okay. Uh, the moment it reads conductivity value, it converts and gives you the total dissolved solids value. And if you notice, that is about 5,600 uh, milligrams per liter, which is about five times more than the drinking water standards. Five times more, okay. Um, so it's not quite what you want to slug right now. Right, okay. so plus, in it, since we have a dissolved oxygen uh, sensor in it, it measures the dissolved oxygen in the water okay. uh, since the time we pulled out, which is about 2.64, which is typically the value for uh, dissolved oxygen in groundwater. So by looking at all this information, you're able to tell municipalities like what kind of treatment they would have to perform to this water if they chose to use it as a drinking water source. Yes. Okay. So, what have we learned? Well, as our water resources here on the South Plains continue to dwindle, researchers are trying to discover alternative sources of water to help meet the demands of municipalities, agriculture, and energy. And while their findings will definitely help us here in our region, they'll also help other regions that are facing the same kinds of water issues in different parts of the world. For In the Field, I'm John Davis. Oh, oh, ah, cut bass. Yeah, that's not what you want to catch. Edit that out, okay? Dadgummit.